He's in France, rages on, with Islamic groups now calling for an emergency meeting with the Interior Ministry after more seaside resorts banned the full-body swimming costume. The French Council of Islamic Faith says some mayors are introducing the ban purely for electoral and political purposes. Meanwhile, a group of activists threw a mock beach party under the slogan Wear What You Want outside the French Embassy in London today. Some of the demonstrators were uh, wearing more conventional swimwear, while others sported burkinis in protest over the wave of bans across neighbouring France. So let's now bring in Tony Bugle from the English Democrats and Catherine Shackdam from the Schaffagner Institute for Middle Eastern Studies. You're both very welcome today uh, on RT International. Uh, there's a bit of picture that's gone viral uh, just over the last few days, it shows a Muslim woman on the beach um, on her knees. She's surrounded by three uh, police officers, male police officers, um, as she takes off her head cover. It sparks quite a bit of outrage, hasn't it? And uh, I suppose there's, there's been two sides to this debate. Supporters of it are saying uh, it's nothing that wouldn't happen in, for example, Muslim countries where Western women would be expected to dress to behave a certain way. Others are saying, how can a woman on a beach in a headscarf possibly be a threat to anyone? How is harassing her going to stop terrorism? Tony, what's your take on it? Well, I actually agree with that. I don't think that harassing a woman on the beach will achieve anything. I think, if anything, you're probably going to make tensions a little higher. But I also question, there is a, a question on the validity of whether or not that was slightly staged or mocked. Now, I don't know because I wasn't there, so I can't say that categorically it was. But very opportunistic that there just happened to be photographers available. My personal opinion is the whole issue of the bikini is detracting from more serious problems that we do need to address. That's what I believe is happening. I think it's being used as a way of, of taking people's attention away from bigger issues. Mm. Catherine, is that something you'd, um, you'd agree with? What's your take on this whole uh, ban and the subsequent reaction to it? I think it's completely ludicrous, and I do agree with your guess. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to think that, you know, banning bikini or even modesty, because I think we're actually addressing the issue of modesty here, um, you know, will help anything or will even forward any mean, you know, for France to actually handle its, its terrorism problem and its radicalism problem. What you have today is, is, is this attempt to just criminalize Islam truly and women. Um, there's a very chauvinistic, by the way, attempt to, you know, um, I would say indoctrinate women to those values that the French Republic, you know, feel um, has a right to impose on, on society. But what you're talking about is that, you know, they're trying to liberate women from what? From the right to choose for themselves how they want to express themselves and how they choose, you know, to behave in society. I, I would like to believe that if we you know, actually are true to the principles of democracy, then, you know, we need to agree that some people will choose, you know, certain ways and certain fashion for themselves. And that's OK. You know, this is the whole point of living in a free country. And, you know, I don't accept this argument. You know, some people are saying that when you go to Islamic countries, then you can't, you know, dress in a certain way or and whatnot. And this is true. But it's not because in certain countries where freedom well, actually, is not respected, that, is that we have to do I've, the same and actually behave I've, worse against people. Yeah, Tony, you had something Catherine, to say to there. to be honest if... with you, yeah, I, I've been to Islamic countries and actually if you go down onto the beach, there is actually dress codes on Islamic beaches. And that's a, a, a fundamental fact. I also, I'm not arguing I agree this. with you in some parts, Catherine. I'm not arguing this, what I'm saying. I agree with you I'm in some saying... parts, but, 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 but if I can finish, what I also find not but. from you, but I find quite hypocritical as a whole, is when we see Sadiq Khan trying to ban images, just images, just billboard pictures of women in bikinis, and we're supposed to accept that in a country where the bikini is a worn item and, and not, not something that's meant to be offensive, it's just a bikini. Well, Tony, if I can just jump um, in there, because you mentioned Sadiq Khan, the, the, the London mayor, issue. the London mayor today, he, he's waded into the debate, he said that nobody should tell a woman what she can and cannot wear, be that in, in other countries abroad, in, in the you. UK. He said that that's not going to happen in the UK, that's not something he's going to support. So uh, what, what right do French police have to tell then a woman that she it, should... Then why would Sadiq Khan it's then It's a try... non-argument. Then why would Sadiq then... Well, it is, it is an argument, because Sadiq Khan himself wants to ban images, just images of women in bikinis. So actually, that's a double standard on Sadiq Khan's part. No, no, the argument, the argument, making, the argument you're making, the argument you're making is that you're trying to get back at people for having an opinion. 
no, I'm not trying to get back at anybody. I'm, I'm telling you what my opinion is. I'm not telling you your opinion is not, is not you're not entitled to it. Well, I'm, I'm trying to actually give my opinion if you let, actually let me talk, because right now you're hugging airtime. I did let you talk. No, what I'm saying is that you're trying to argue that it's okay for women to be completely harassed um, and to be criminalized because they choose to live in a certain way, which is I not bothering anybody, okay. by the way, under the cover of counterterrorism and trying to address radicalism. And your argument is it's because it's happening in certain countries the other way around that it makes it okay. It's not okay. It's never okay. Women have the right to behave okay. however they choose to behave, as long as they're comfortable with it, as long as it's their choice. I'm not finished. And this other thing is that you're trying to criminalize Islam and women because you think it's okay and we're more visible, you know, than other people. But the argument is you're making is completely Where irrelevant because you Muslim have opened women? up Europe to, you know, to radicals and you're not actually addressing the issue, those real issues, because it's too much, it's too difficult for you to do. You don't have the political courage to do it because you prefer to be friends with the likes of Saudi Arabia or Qatar, you know, and those people are the real oppressors of women and repressors of women. I mean, if you go to Saudi Arabia, they can't even I drive. Agree with you. Never mind going to the beach and Catherine, never mind. You need to, exercising you, you the need right to, draw to dip breath. your toe into water. And well, maybe so how if you, does that maybe help if you the drew debate? breath and you listened, first of all, I'm not, I haven't said it's okay. Uh, I'm listening to you plenty, You're I, I, I promise you. down the microphone at me. Sorry? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Tony. Right, uh, right. I, I, at no point have I said it's okay and at no point have, have I criminalised Muslim women at all in any way, shape or form. My point is <clears throat> that you are right. I could not go to Islamic countries and dress a certain way. Now, at the moment, this is a temporary ban in France, and it, it's as much about, if you read it, it's actually as much about protecting Muslim women after the attacks in Bastille, because what they didn't want is that the, the women to be highlighted and, and standing out as being Muslim, and therefore putting them at risk. Now, there has been an, an incident just, I believe, today, where a gang of three Muslim men in France um, are being probed because there was a 19-year-old girl suffered a broken nose, a 20-year-old taken to hospital semi-conscious because they were actually trying to take ownership of part of the beach. These are problems, these are the real problems we need to address. The, the, the argument about an item of clothing I is agree small with you. in comparison I agree with you. to, as you said, the radicalization that's going on. 500 ISIS in the jungle in Cary. Let's address those issues together. I'm not against you, Catherine, far from it. Catherine, if I can just come back to you with the question. The French no, Prime Minister has I, a different opinion. He, yes. he stated that the burkini, uh, in his words, is an expression of a counter-society based on the enslavement of women. Is it really about enslavement here? Uh, it's not about enslavement, and you know this is the crazy thing. You have a prime minister who is actually bending over backwards to the likes of Saudi Arabia, selling Saudi Arabia weapons, calling them friend and special partners, and then he wants to talk about radicalization and the oppression of women. Excuse me, hypocritical is the word of the day when it comes to you know the, the French prime minister. I mean the the burkini, or if you want to call it the Islamic swimming suit, does not represent even a faith. It's just for women to be modest if they choose to be. It's just a way for Muslim women and others, by the way, you know to be able to, you know, uh, participate into society and do those activities that they would not feel comfortable doing otherwise. I would like to think that people are entitled to dress the way they want, however they want, when they want. Mm. If people want to dress a bikini, then that's fine. If they want to have tattoos in person, then that's fine. But the idea that we can actually objectify women and tell women what to do, when to do it and how to behave is ludicrous. It's actually insulting. It's chauvinistic, mm. you know, to, to, to the extreme. It's a form of fascism. It France has become a sorry excuse of a democracy which remains under a state of emergency by the way and doesn't even look like a republic anymore if i could just get back to you tony about the wider context of this we've seen the rise of uh, a number of right-wing parties in europe across across all the countries uh, critics of the ban they're saying that the new trend is prompted by the desire of far-right parties to uh well to effectively score political points to get more support um, do you think this ban is, is part of that, uh, part of a PR exercise to tap into these, uh, these feeling among the public to get more votes? No, 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 no. No, I don't think that at all. I'll tell you what I do think, though. I think that this is a, a part of the way of the government and the media making light of the bigger issues. I don't think... You see, I get really, really fed up with the term far right. You know, sometimes it's not about being far right. It's just about knowing right over wrong. 
and the fact that people, it's everybody else that terms a party as being far right or not far right. Who deems, I, I would class myself as centre right, I wouldn't say, and I, I actually work alongside and I interview people like Rahil Raza. Uh, Shireen Gadozi. These are uh, Muslim reformers. I've just recently interviewed Zudi Jassa. These are people that are also saying that these things are not acceptable. When you are in a country, I believe that Muslims are, are telling me all the time when we are in a country that is not a Muslim country, it is our duty to behave and uh, follow the laws of that land. So if this law has been applied, whether it be temporary or not, then surely that's what you have to abide by. Mm. Otherwise, what you're saying is, well, we'll abide by the law of the land unless, of course, it upsets us, and then we're going to scream that you're just, you're just oppressing us. When actually you've got women in Iran, you know, that are pleading with Western women to flout tourist laws. We've got Manjib. When Manjib was, had ISIS driven out of it, the first thing that women did, they ripped off their burqas and the men shaved off their beards. Uh, but, That's not me or people on the far right. That's mm. what's happening. But this, this debate, Tony, it's, it's, it's ignited all over Europe, hasn't it, about Muslim clothing. German media reporting that a Muslim intern was fired on her first day in office because she refused to take off a headscarf. Uh, Burkini's banned in France, uh, parts of Belgium, parts of Italy now as well, bringing this in. I mean, uh, the, these uh, bans are put in place, so called, to, to, to fight terror, for public order, etc. But it hasn't actually stopped any of these attacks happening. It hasn't stopped uh, public disorder taking no, place. Make it worse. Isn't this all just blown out of proportion? This whole uh, this whole issue. Look, I don't have a problem with the hijab. I don't have a problem myself personally with the burkini. But I do if have an opinion when it comes to. It is true, if I go to whatever country I may go to, if they say to me, this, for the United Emirates, Emirates uh, Arab Emirates, then, for example, they have a thing during the holy month of Ramadan. Um, it, it's, a, it's against their laws to show public displays of affection. If I was in that country at that time, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any public displays of affection. I would abide by those rules, because they are the rules, and I would out of respect do so. I fail to see why... That should be the reason this becomes a bigger issue is because it's it's almost being used as a tool. And what happens is the real extreme problems that are going on within all of these countries, Germany being told that they need to start stockpiling water and food because they fear a mass uh, a mass attack. Mm. They, these are the bigger stories. These mm. are the bigger issues. The Burkini, in comparison, is a very small story being used to take the attention away. And I actually agree with Catherine. I think that it's being used to take away um, the, the bigger problems that we should be tackling. Catherine, if I can just come, uh, come back to you um, briefly. Uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel says that uh, burkas, burkinis uh, hinder integration. Integration has been something that's been quite widely <laughs> debated in Europe, the integration of Muslim communities into wider society. Um, do you think that really ha hampers the process of Muslim women integrating? Uh, I don't think fashion has anything to do with anything, you know, uh, never mind integration. I mean, what you're really talking about is that you're trying to portray, you know, um, Islamic values, something as being foreign, which is not. Uh, you're talking about modesty in this case. And of course, when you go to a country, you have to abide by the law. I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, but you're talking, but at the same time, you have to respect that people will come with their own culture and their own identity. We have to learn to live with each other. I'm not talking about cultural Marxism, where people have to give up their sense of nationalism and completely bend over backward to accept other people and give up who they are and what they believe in. What I'm talking about is respect for each other. What I'm talking about is understanding that, you know, this radicalism that we're all trying to actually face and eradicate has nothing to do, you know, with women, has nothing to do with Islam, but has everything to do with a certain ideology. We all know where it comes from. We know what, it, we know what it's called. It's called Wahhabism. We need to address it. We need to stop tiptoeing around the issue and trying to, you know, to address ridiculous problems, you know, such as, you know, the, the headscarf or whether or not people want to wear bikinis or whether they want to be modest. What you're actually talking about is for women to exercise a very important right to choose whether or not they want to cover their modesty or whether they want to have one for that matter. Um, I'd like to think that women are quite capable of thinking for themselves, thank you very much, and they don't need to be told, it's certainly not by the state, how they should behave. It should be something that comes from within. It should be something that men don't have to tell them. And it's very, it's incredible to me that we are criticizing, for example, Saudi Arabia quite often for the way that they treat women, but we're not realizing that the French Republic or even you know, other countries in Europe
Europe are now following you know, almost the same narrative by telling women how they should behave, except that this time we have to take off our clothes to please society or to express our, mm. you know, our Republican values or prove to France that we are so democratic. This is absolutely ridiculous. Can we please go back to the real issues? Can we please go back to fighting terrorism and radicalism and mm. preventing those psychos to come and take over? Because this is what you're talking about. I, I you know, again, Islam you. is not a nationality, so you can't actually close your border to it. Yeah, Tony, do, do feel free to jump in there. I, I, do, I was going to say, I do agree with you within, within reason there. But to turn around and say, to compare what France is doing in comparison to, say, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, a woman's life would be stoned to death. I don't think they're going to stone anyone to death in France. Now, that said... No, you're misogyny, forcing a woman to face the batons and, 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 you know, and, and tear gas or whatever. For, what they've done is they've, impli they've applied a rule... They have applied a rule. It's a temporary ban. They if you look, it runs and ends at the end of August. Insulting. It's a temporary ban. There are, look, in this country, I cannot go and purchase fuel wearing a crush helmet. I cannot go into a bank wearing a balaclava. I cannot walk around wearing a mask. That is, that is part of the laws of my country, which I will respect because they are the laws of my country. Some nightclubs, you can't wear a baseball cap. Now, I can understand that if I came into a bank or if I walked into a shop and you owned a shop and I was wearing a balaclava, I would expect somebody to come up and tell me that what I'm doing is unacceptable. Now, those rules have been applied. It's a temporary rule. And I think that, in a way, by making a bigger issue out of it, you're actually so also you want feeding into the, the, the extremism then. that's flourishing. If I Sorry. can put a question to, to both of you, um, uh, perhaps both of our guests today, where is the line drawn in this, in this law, though? I mean, I've seen images on social media comparing women in burkinis to nuns in religious dress on the beach, to people in wetsuits, which look actually very similar uh, to burkinis, by the way, these wetsuits, just made of a different material. I mean, where is discretionary power, common sense and logic going to come in here? Uh, will a nun also be forced to undress? Will somebody wearing a wetsuit be forced to undress? I mean, wh where can the line be drawn here? Well, a burkini isn't a religious requirement. Well, for me, I Neither think it has to do because, you know, not the, religious the requirements. Sorry, Tony, if I can go to you first, and then, Catherine, you can jump in in just one moment. Sorry, uh, the, the burqa is not a religious requirement. The burkini is not a religious requirement. I believe you'll find that the nuns have it is. Now, I myself, I'm an atheist. I don't have any pref preference to any religion at all of any kind. But I do think that, that when it comes to, I've been out to in, in, in Islamic countries and I've watched women either go swimming in the full burqa or they've gone swimming in a swimming costume. So it is a choice and I get that it's a choice and I understand that it's a choice. But if I am going to go to a country and they say to me, look, we've got this temporary ban on at the moment, I know it might upset a few people, but do you know what? There's a reason for it. This is our reason for it. These are the rules. These mm. are the rules that are applied. We have to respect them. I, Otherwise, I, where do we draw the line? I suppose, though, Tony, even though rules are rules and, and laws are laws, people do have a right to protest them if they do feel strongly about them. And this has caused a pretty big, uh, big uproar, hasn't it, all over France and indeed wider. Um, Catherine, uh, what do you think but about this? Everybody has a this, right this... to protest about anything. Absolutely. Catherine, what do you feel about these lines? Where will this line be drawn? We've had, first, we've had face veils banned. Now we've had burkinis banned. I mean, where does this stop? Where can this stop? I'd like the line to be drawn at, really, you know, at freedom of religion and at civil liberties. I would like the line to be drawn at human rights. I would like the line to be drawn, you know, at the idea that women have a right to choose. And yes, the burkini is not, you know, is not a necessity in Islam. It's not a requirement. Uh, but then again, it's a, it's a free choice. Women need to have the choice and stop associating the burkini with Islam. I mean, plenty of women choose to wear it just because for, you know, if they have skin cancer, there's plenty of reason why a woman would like to choose, you know, to wear it covering their head or not. Um, you know, we need to just stop thinking that, you know, we, we, you're trying, I mean, your guest is trying to say that he doesn't agree with it, but then again, he still agrees with it because people have to, you know, follow the rules. But what if those rules are absolutely yeah. undemocratic? Then call I'm it what female. it is and just say that you want to live I'm in female, a country Catherine. which is completely totalitarian and it tells people what to do. You know, if you want to live under a police state, Catherine, then that's fine. Islam but please call it what it is and stop being hypocritical about it and pretend that it's a democracy. Catherine, a democracy Catherine, means that you have civil Catherine, liberties. I would like all, to think maybe if you that women have the right to choose. No, I'm talking, bit. actually. I'm sorry, as a woman, I just find it do have a right, but first of all, could you please you address me as a woman? I am to be a woman. Me how women I'm not a man. I'm a woman. Just because in Islamic countries, this okay. is how they do it. 
Okay, get, uh, You're okay. the one getting irate, and you've not even noticed I happen to be female. OK, th thanks so much. We are out of time, unfortunately, in this debate. But thanks so much, Tony Bugle from uh, the English Democrats and Catherine Shackdam, uh, Shafakna Institute of Middle Eastern Studies. Thank the both, of, both of you today for giving us your opinions on this uh, pretty controversial topic over the last few days. Thanks so much. You're welcome.